A very good Saturday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to today's European Outlook. We certainly have got a very wild uh, winter solstice. I was going to say summer solstice, uh, we wish. But uh, we've got a very wild winter solstice out there, especially across northern areas of the British Isles. Winds in excess of 80 miles per hour. We've got the uh, unofficial wind gusts in excess of 100 miles per hour. But uh, according to the BBC, according to the Met Office, we've got the official wind gusts in excess of 80 miles per hour at South Uist. Kirkwall, 81. Stornoway, 77. Alton O'Hara, 67. But if we go to Lee at Highland Weather, we've got the winds at St Kilda in excess of 111 miles per hour. Elgo, 100. And South Uist, 82. Leverborough, 81 miles per hour. We've got a very big uh, pressure gradient between 965 millibars just to the north of the UK and 1042 millibars between the Azores and Iberia. We've got a tight squeeze in the Isobars, meaning that we've got very powerful winds. And those winds are now starting to turn more northwesterly, meaning we're going to drag in colder air and therefore we're going to see the snow level coming down during the overnight tonight. Looking at the latest of the Met Office model, you can see that the snow increases as we progress through the back half of today, overnight and into tomorrow morning. We're talking about uh, some decent amounts of snow, especially above uh, 200, 250 metres above sea level through the central highlands. Also uh, some snow over the tops of the southern uplands and the north Pennines. I'll get there. <laughs> and uh, the Cumbrian Fells, even North Wales and other parts, even Ireland as well, seeing some snow as that colder air digs southwards. Looking at the upcoming five-day period, we've got day warmer than average. Uh, according to the GFS model, this is the period now incorporating Christmas 21st through the 26th, so 21st through Boxing Day. We've got warmer than average conditions across the UK and Ireland, and it's all thanks to the fact that we've got high pressure building in across the UK and Ireland with the southwesterly winds and the subtropical sourced air we could see potentially some of the warmest temperatures um, observed in the UK ever, uh, you know, basically from uh, Christmas Eve into Christmas Day itself. And then even Christmas Day uh, as a whole, we could be seeing temperatures in the low teens uh, in terms of uh, the temperatures. So you can see if we look at uh, the latest temperatures of the model, this is the Met Office model, uh, and you can see as we go back through, you can see we've got the chilly air digging southwards. Some freezing temperatures actually across Central Highland, as can be seen here. Um, widespread low single figures, and then as we progress through the course of tomorrow, and then in the Monday, we start to see the milder air building in. This is Tuesday, so this is Christmas Eve. And uh, we've got temperatures in double figures quite widely. And with the fern effect, southwesterly winds blown over the uh, over the mountains. And we've got rapid snow melt as well. But uh, 13 Celsius along the Murray Coast. We've got uh, 13, 12, 13 Celsius quite widely across East Wales, the West Midlands, southwestern England as well. And it uh, would not be surprising if we see some local records falling as we progress through the course of late Christmas Eve in the Christmas day. Looking at the temperatures for the month of December so far, we're now warmer than average. And with the next uh, five, six days, uh, really through the remainder of December, we're going to see warmer than average temperatures. At least if we have got a shot of something colder towards the, uh, the, the new year period, so we'll need to keep an eye on that quite closely. But uh, certainly when you look at the, the Manjulian oscillation, that is something really worth paying attention to. It still looks as if we've got uh, a phase seven starting to show up as we progress through the next 10 days or so. Uh, this is the GFS showing an amplified phase seven. If you look at the ECMWF model, we can see uh, what it's showing with regards to the Manjulian oscillation. And uh, again, it's looking like a, a reasonably amplified phase seven. So this is now the 5 through 10 day period. And if, if we look at the mean zonal winds, we can see quite a rapid decrease in pressure uh, and wind speed at the 10 millibar level. So you can see this 
a very strong, record-breaking strong mean zone wind at the current period. But we've got a sharp drop off the below average here. So going from record strong to below average in the space of about, what, a week or so, that says something. That tells us that something's going on. And I think as we go into the phase seven, which is the uh, the enhanced uh, thunderstorm activity, more in towards the, se uh, the west, towards the central Pacific, we then start to see the atmosphere get uh, somewhat of a kick. And therefore, I think we're going to start to see a buildup of pressure. Looking at, uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, the NAO and see what the, the latest GFS ensemble is showing. Firmly uh, positive at the moment here. That was expected uh, very much so over, uh, through it, pretty much through the month of uh, December, actually. Looking at the Arctic Oscillation, this is interesting. Look at how we're kind of generally just positive goes negative and then it goes more firmly negative as we move towards the first week of uh, of January and uh, really this is a telltale sign that we're going to start to see changes take place. Many people get, you know, it's amazing how you get cold spells and then people jump on the fact that it's going to be the coldest winter since 0910, then you get mild spells and it's going to be the warmest winter ever. It's incredible how people throw these comments out without any kind of backing. I've said all along, and I've given you the reasons why I think a certain pattern is going to develop, even before the models show it. And, you know, it really frustrates me slightly when you see people jumping on individual model runs, whether it be the operational or whatever. And models are not the be-all and end-all in terms of forecasting. There's a lot of people... Uh, out there and, and I don't profess to know it all I don't profess to be a, a professional but nonetheless it's amazing how people basically buy the they learn how to read a synoptic chart and then the base uh, a whole forecast a whole idea on that one run and then the next run shows complete opposite and therefore they throw that out the window or they go quiet or whatever if it's uh, playing into what they expect uh, to see taking place, then they jump all over, they jump on social media, they hype things up, it's for a clickbait. But the, the point is that you look at uh, the bigger picture, you understand the mechanism behind the meteorology. It's understanding what's going on at the source. Therefore, you understand what uh, can take place through various parameters, that then changes the atmosphere, and then it's the ripple effect downstream that you try to uh, forecast. That is what I'm doing here on this channel, is trying to tell you exactly what I'm seeing based on, you know, does that make sense? Uh, and if it does make sense, then you buy into it. I've made a forecast back at the beginning of December uh, for not only the winter forecast, but also the December forecast. Things are playing out pretty darn well. I said it's going to be a warmer than average December. I said there was a 50-50 chance of seeing snow, even with a slightly greater than 50% chance over northern UK towards the end of the month, towards the Christmas period. That is not materialising, but there is reasons to believe that the Manjulian Oscillation is now starting to head towards the colder phases, and therefore would expect to start to see something cooler developing. And if we look at the latest of the GFS, We've got this very, very mild period between Christmas and New Year in particular here. And then we're starting to see a flirt with something colder towards week one of January. That would make sense based on the fact that the MJO is heading towards phase seven. We're seeing a, a sharp decrease or deceleration of the mean zonal winds at 10 HPA. And there is you know, evidence to back up why it would turn colder. And that is essentially what's, what, what the script is here. But they, certainly this is going to be potentially a top 10, if not a top 5, warm December. And I did expect uh, a warmer than average December overall. Now let me just quickly see if there's anything else that I was going to show you. Uh, no question, I'll probably have forgotten uh, to, to talk about certain things here. By the way, live stream. There was a, a break last weekend because it was at the Christmas Panto, there will be a live stream 4.15pm tomorrow afternoon. I will leave a link in the description below today's video 
for the live stream tomorrow. We're going to look at all things global. There is, as always, lots going on around the planet with regards to the weather. We've had the, obviously, disastrous cyclone Chido. We've had record-breaking snowfall or near-record-breaking snowfall in Japan and the Koreas. Record warm Christmas, potentially. Uh, we've also seen the some of the warmest day December temperatures in parts of Australia also. So flooding, flash flooding across parts of Indonesia, Thailand. Uh, lots going on, and uh, I will endeavour to look at that in a little bit more detail in tomorrow's live stream. So that's 4.15 tomorrow afternoon. Hope you can join me for that. It would be good to see you. Leave a comment. I can try and answer some questions, etc., etc. But certainly we do have interesting things going on at the moment here. I'm going to finish off by showing you the latest model run in terms of... Uh, right, okay. Yep, that's the right chart I was wanting to show you. Let's have a look and see what the latest weeklies are showing in terms of the ECMWF in terms of uh, the upper heights. So are we going to start to see a response? MJO coming out of the warm phases. We've got stormy conditions at the moment here. Uh, we've got the mild conditions as well, not only across the Western Europe, but as well as that across the uh, parts of North America as well. We're going to start to flood the, uh, the, the, the North American continent with milder conditions. But let's play through. So you've got low heights. Let's go back. We've got low heights. That was expected. We had the cold temperatures, low heights over the Arctic region at 50 millibars. That tends to reflect the 500 millibar pattern underneath. And therefore, we've seen that taking place. Region over North America, region over Western portions of Europe. Trophiness over Eastern Europe, granted. But as we play through, you can start to see the heights rising, not only across the UK and Ireland, but look at this here. This is the period now between 1st of January and 8th of January. So week 1 of January is looking rather interesting. Yes, we've got some higher pressure over the UK, Western Europe. That's not necessarily good news in terms of cold. But look at the region. Northern portions of North America, up into Greenland, up into the Arctic region. We've got a trough over Europe here. We've got a negative over eastern North America as well. Let's play it through and see if it indicates anything more trophy as we move towards the second week of January. It's still showing higher pressure over the UK and Ireland. But nonetheless, look at the heights. North Atlantic, Greenland, Arctic region, that's your negative Arctic oscillation and North Atlantic oscillation pattern. Is this a reflection of the MJO moving into phase seven and the response to the atmosphere? Who knows? We're seeing a deceleration of the winds at 10 millibars as well. There's a reason for that deceleration. It uh, looks as if it's uh, potentially because of the higher pressure building towards the higher latitudes. Lots going on. Keep it right here in the channel. Hope to see you tomorrow in the live stream and enjoy the rest of your Saturday evening. Bye for now.